They create something. The enemy will try to slip into your relationship and all kinds. Of, but let's just talk about family. We, we, we have, I, 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 we, we have a man in my home. I'm the male. My wife is a female. Charmaine is a child. That's a man. Right. Male, female, child. One man. In your home, it might be male, female, two child, or whatever your gender is, and God accepts everybody. Right. I'm still gonna preach it like it's right. true. Right. So whatever you have, female, female, male, 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 female. I know the preacher ain't supposed to say this, but everybody got saved by the blood. Amen. The same blood who saved your lying self. So, oh, you have a complete person in a home. Now let me get to what I came to talk about. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were in one place, with one accord, suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. They were, here's, now here's what I want to talk to you about. You and I have been saved by grace. I'll be done in time. We have been saved by grace, Mr. Vickers. You and I have a relationship with God based on what? Promises. And I got to get this, oh, shut up. You're going to waste time in church, dancing, speaking in tongues, singing, looking and judging everybody else if you don't understand what I'm telling you this morning. Your relationship with God is based solely on promises. Yes. Yes. When you stepped in the church, when you stepped in the church, once you come in the church, before God, nothing matters but his promises and your and your willingness to believe him. Yes. It just, listen, I'm going to say it again. If you can hear me, I'm teaching you as your, I feel this in my belly. I'm teaching you as your apostle. We waste so much time in church because we are focused on the wrong things. Yes. When you come into the church, you have the blessing of Abraham. Yes. Yes. Your relationship with God is based on his willingness to make promises to you and your willingness to believe him. Nothing else. He sees you as holy, unblameable, unreprovable. You have no sin in his eyes. So God is not interested in your lifestyle or what you're drinking or what you're eating. But he's interested in general love. Are you going to believe my promise? I just somebody say amen in him. His only interest. I'm going to preach till I get it out. His only interest. Please say amen. You hear me? Listen, I'm on a mission with this. He's not interested in your dance. He loves your gifts. He wants you to use your gift. That's not his interest. Talk, do you believe my promise? Everything God does with you is my promise. Shut that up. Is this coming over good? Every single thing you get from God is going to come in the form of a promise. Whether you be Pat or Leon. Different houses, different places, different issues. Yeah. All God wants from them is receive a promise, believe a promise, stand on a promise, and watch them perform it. The thing is to come. Why my heart is heavy right now is because 90% of the people in here don't believe that. Mm. Wow. That's, That's the problem. Yes. Yes. That's the problem. You know why? Because you're so accustomed to going to church. And you have a Moses, uh, Moses, uh, Moses. Uh, let me give you these three points. Uh, let's look at the lecture and the lecturer and the lecture. You know, all these things you go to church and you get excited and you leave not understanding how to progress in God. I want a sign as the apostle of Jesus Christ to draw you close to God in truth. This is not a place where you come to get excited. Those uh, to the way you come. To hear from the king. And he's only going to deal with your promises. If you receive that, say amen. amen. If you receive it, say amen. amen. Thank you. Y'all can sit down. Now let me finish this. I need 15 minutes. Oh. If I'm preaching good, say amen. amen. So now, you have the apostles. Jesus said to them in Acts chapter 1. When he was written from the, from the, from the grave, 
He said, I want you to wait and don't depart from Jerusalem. Everybody know the scripture? But wait on the promise of the Father. You don't believe that. Turn to Acts chapter 1. Now, what I want to show you about promises is, if you're with, if you're with me, say amen. amen. We'll be done here in a minute, but you need to get this. Every time with Abraham, God made him a promise. With Moses, God made him a promise. With the apostles, God made him a promise. With you and I, he gave us many promises. His, oh, glory to God. Help me, Holy Spirit. Grant me grace, Father. Grant me grace to break through this this morning. Grant me grace to leave this place full of truth this morning. Grant me grace, Father. I want you to hear my heart. Be tired of dancing. Be tired of having a good time in the Lord. And I'm not talking about our dance ministry. That's a wonderful ministry. I'm talking about people who come to church just to dance. And so they have a high time in the Lord. Dancing like they dance, that's using the gift before God. That's good. But that's not why you come to church. That's right. That's right. The things that you are dealing with, God has already given you a way of escape. But you have to find it. You cannot be lazy. You have to find it in a promise. My God, be not slothful. Oh, I feel this thing bouncing back on me right now. You got to find it in a promise queue. We can shout all we want to shout. I can pray for you all I want to. If you don't use the principles of God, you will never, you will never progress in the things of God. Amen. If you hear me say amen. amen. So now, what happened here on the day of Pentecost? Andrea, Jesus promised them, stay up there until you receive the promise of the Father, which I told you. Here's my first point I want you to see. They were only in that upper room because of a promise. <laughs> oh, this is good stuff, man. Amen. The only reason that they were in the upper room is because they had a promise. The only reason you should be taking any action is because you have a promise. Yeah. My God, help me in here. I don't care what you're facing. Your response should be based on a promise. What did God promise me here? What did God promise you? My God, now. They were in the upper room because they had a promise. Jesus said, you should receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. They don't know what this Holy Ghost looks like. They don't know when he's coming. They don't know how he's coming. But they got a promise. And because they were in the promise, they had a suddenly experience. And what happens with us is, we receive a promise. I mean, it'll happen tomorrow. Be back away. Can I give you all some insight on promises? It, it took Abraham 25 years to walk in what God promised him. It took David 25 years to become the king God told him he would be. Moses walked the wilderness for 40 years before he walked in what God called him to do. These are men we preach about every Sunday. But you don't understand that they took faith and patience to walk in what God promised them. You can't just get a promise and expect it's going to happen tomorrow without your participation and anticipation. Somebody say amen up in here. I came by to tell you this morning that whatever God promised you, it can never die. When God releases a word on his mouth, it can never die. It's going to take faith and patience. It's going to take you being more stopful. But if God releases a word on his mouth, it can never die. When that word goes, your word's going to even die. That's why you see yourself walking in some of the things you spoke over yourself a long time ago. Right. Yes. Wow. Let me just finish with you. Is this good for you? Yes. Let me just finish with the apostles. They were in that upper room because they had a promise. Yes. And the Bible says they were in one place with one accord. And I'm going back to your family now, or your ministry now, or your business. See, God gives him promises. It's going to be either an individual promise or a group promise. Either way requires the same response, but in different ways. Because my, my response to a promise should always be hope. Amen. Hope means what? I'm anticipating, I'm expecting, and I have confidence in God. Yes. You cannot walk in victory in the kingdom without confidence in God. Yes. The Bible says about Abraham that he was fully persuaded. That whatsoever he promised, he's also able to perform it. If you're with me, say amen. amen. I'm trying to give you food for your life. You gonna have to participate. You gotta find a promise, and then you gotta be hopeful.
you what hope gives you is what hope makes you do is speak towards what you're expecting. Amen. Amen. So here it is, here it is, these guys.